Welcome to Dateline Polk with news about your county government. I'm your host, Steve Barnes. Today, you'll learn about county commission actions from the October 4th board meeting. Tuesday's meeting was the first of the new fiscal year and a time to get on with new business facing the county. The board approved Chastain Skillman to do consulting work on a project in the Central Regional Utility Service Area that will construct a 12-inch potable water transmission main on Spirit Lake Road and create fire flow improvements. In this agreement, which isn't to exceed about $195,000 from the Utilities Enterprise Fund, Chastain Skillman will supply services for design, permitting, bid phase, and construction. This morning, the Commission approved an agreement with Chastain Skillman to design a 12-inch water main along Spirit Lake Road from Thornhill to Country Place. Uh, the contract is not to exceed $195,000, and this project is part of our master plan effort. So our master plan uh, recommended increased water pressure and fire protection along Spirit Lake Road, and uh, this project will, is part of that implementation plan. In another approval for consulting services, the board approved an agreement with Jones, Edmonds and Associates for engineering services for U.S. 1792's reclaimed water main improvements. The project, which is in the Northeast Regional Utility Service Area, will upgrade the reclaimed water main from 12 inches to 16 inches in the U.S. 1792 corridor. Jones Edmonds will provide design, permitting, bid phase, and construction phase services, which will not exceed about $250,000. This morning, the Commission approved an agreement with Jones Edmonds for a contract not to exceed $250,000 to build a reclaimed water extension along US 17 and slash 92. Uh, the, this reclaimed main will be between 12 inches and 16 inches. And as Commissioner Hall asked, we will be looking at the right-of-way to make sure that we can uh, put it in the, the most cost-effective, best place for when that expansion of that road comes along, that it will not, we won't have to uh, rebuild that particular line. This, this reclaim main is a part of our master plan uh, list of improvement projects, and uh, we're glad to get started. <laughs> The board approved consulting services with Amec Foster Wheeler Environment and Infrastructure Incorporated for engineering services for FDC Grove Road reclaimed water main improvements in the Northeast Regional Utility Service area. Yeah. The commission approved an agreement with Amec Foster Wheeler for a contract not to exceed $169,000 to design a reclaimed water main along FDC Grove Road uh, and it'll be an eight inch reclaim water main. This project is part of our master plan list of projects. The project, which isn't to exceed about $169,000, will extend an 8-inch reclaimed water main and the company will provide design, permitting, bid phase, and construction phase services. The board voted to reject a proposal for engineering service contracts for traffic and parks projects that were put jointly in a request for the proposal. The results from the RFP hindered small local firms from being more competitive, which commissioners speculated could have been from the way the RFP was conducted jointly. So the board then voted to move forward with putting out a new RFP that separated the roads and drainage and parks projects into separate requests. In the conversion of the Gus Stewart Water Production Facility to a reclaimed water booster station, the board approved an addendum to the construction manager at risk authorization and purchase order with Garney Companies, which will manage the construction phase of the project. The commission approved an agreement with Garney Companies for $1.8 million. This project is to convert the Gus Stewart Water Production Facility to a reclaimed booster station. This project was one of our master plan recommended projects and uh, will begin shortly. In other news, David Sorg, board chairman of Career Source Polk, provided a brief quarterly update of the agency where he mentioned the group recently received a positive report from the state's Department of Economic Opportunity. 
The county's unemployment rate had dropped to 5.8% between July 1st and September 30th, as the group helped more than 230 people gain employment. This morning I had the opportunity to present our quarterly board report from Career Source Polk, and we went over some highlights of the last quarter from uh, July to September. One of the, the major initiatives we put on was our annual breakfast and our best places to work awards that actually recognizes the, the partnerships and the employers in the area for making good contributions to the community and to their employees. Uh, we we uh, represented over 22 awards presented to those folks and we had five employers of distinctions. In addition to that I highlighted in our board report our initiative on youth employment and over this past summer we provided over 230 youth aged 16 to 24 opportunities to grow in their, their careers and provide them skills for their future. The board recognized Tom Palmer for his 42 years of covering Polk County News while working for The Ledger. Tom worked as both the county reporter and environmental reporter for The Ledger. The board approved a service agreement with Clifton Larson Allen for annual financial auditing for the county, the clerk of courts, property appraiser, sheriff, and supervisor of elections for $260,000. This time of year is when board members make appointments and reappointments to the county's various advisory boards and committees. On Tuesday, board members made several of these, which included appointments to Tom Palmer to the Lakes Access Advisory Committee for the remainder of the term expiring November 16th, and to reappoint him for the three-year term ending November 16th, 2019. Also, Craig Burke, as a member of the Board of Adjustment for the remainder of the term ending June 16, 2018. Keith Ward, as a member of the Board of Adjustment for a three-year term expiring October 4, 2019. They also made reappointments to David Hupp as a member of the Lakes Access Advisory Committee for a three-year term that ends November 16, 2019 and to Mark Osborne as a member of the Lakes Access Advisory Committee for a three-year term that ends November 16, 2019, and Edie Yates as a member of the Taurus Development Council for a four-year term that ends December 31, 2019, and Jackie Johnson also as a member of the Taurus Development Council for a four-year term that ends October 31, 2020. In public hearings, during the afternoon session, the board approved a series of large-scale comprehensive plan amendments to change future land use from residential medium to institutional on about 15 acres of land, which is now owned by Warner University. The school purchased the property from the South Lake Wales Church of God, which operated an adult congregate living facility on the site but the school converted it to a dormitory for student housing. The also, employment center to residential medium on 74 acres owned by Holly Hill Grove CPA. And a residential low to leisure recreation on about 422 acres owned by Sandlin RV and Golf Resort in Lakeland. A phosphate mining to agricultural residential rural on about 17 acres owned by Pebbledale Mines Watts northeast of Bartow. Also a residential low and convenience center to a neighborhood activity center on about 10 acres off Knight Station Road in North Lakeland. And an agricultural residential rural to institutional on 250 acres owned by Clay Cut LLC, which operates a solid waste management facility, a sand mine and construction and debris landfill on property south of Haines City. The board also approved several other changes relating to the Clay Cut LLC property, which included an amendment to the land development code, which would allow for more intense institutional uses and allow for two parcels owned by Clay Cut to become a solid waste facility. Well, that wraps up this edition of Dateline Polk. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We encourage you to join us at the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, October 18th. I'm Steve Barnes. Thanks for watching.